Hi, welcome to Living a Sustainable Dream. And this is the propane tankless water heater that I've been working on to install. And you've been watching probably the series. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about, it's all done and finished. And so we're just gonna talk about just the system in itself. Uh, so you guys saw me actually install the vent pipe with the wall thimble, and I discussed the importance of that. But what I did not know is once I got this installed is the wall thimble kicked the unit or this entire thing out three inches from the wall. So I could not put it flush against the wall as this is designed to do. So I had to create a bracket itself for it to hang on. Uh, so what I did is I just got some scrap wood from the homestead. I sanded it down and I cut it to where it would actually be able to hook up to the two studs on the wall. So I got a stud here and a stud on the back side here. So I wasn't really too upset about it. And the reason why is because it added a little bit more stability to the system. So I'm not worried about this ever coming crashing down or anything. So this is hooked straight into the studs. Uh, that's also the best thing about having wood on the property is you can just go out, find your scrap wood, cut it to length, sand it down, and use it for whatever you need. So this is actually put together three inches. So it's a one by four and a two by six put together to make it work. I could have used different sizes, but this is what I had on hand to make it easy. All right, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the plumbing situation. So what I did is I plumbed as you can see, I had to cut holes in the sheetrock or the um, drywall. And what I did is I tapped into one pipe. And that pipe is coming off the hot water tank on the other side of this wall that is hooked up to the wood cook stove. Now, what I did is, as that pipe is leaving the wood cook stove, that hot water, or should, have, should be hot water, but when the stove's not running, it's not, I tapped into that one single pipe. And so you see the two pipes coming down the, the wall one is the exit from that pipe and one is a return to that same pipe and it goes throughout the entire house. The reason I actually like this setup is because it is coming from a 50 gallon tank on the other side of this wall that's inside the house right by the wood cook stove. That uh, 50 gallon hot water tank is literally at room temperature. So we're looking at probably about 70 degrees during the season that I'm not running a uh, wood fire in the cook stove. So this unit is only going to heat up 70 degree water and more uh, from that, that station. My cistern is about 43 degrees uh, temperature of water. And so for this to heat up 43 degrees, they say this has about a 30 degree variance. So if it starts at 43 degrees, it can get you up to a nice 73, maybe if you're pushing it 80 degrees, 90 if you're lucky. But on this scenario, I can easily get up to 100, 120 and so forth. So this actually has been heating up quite well. Um, I would say my showers are very hot. Uh, we have very hot water at the kitchen sink. There's been no issues. In fact, I can get it up to right now, I've been able to get it up to probably about 140 degrees easily. Okay, that's kind of where I've been playing with it. All right, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the bypass. And the bypass is right here and I've been working on that. Now, what I could do is, this is the uh, uh, intake pipe. I just have a shut off valve here. I just shut that off. I shut off the exit pipe or the return. Okay. And then what I do is I open up this valve here because the water cannot pass here and it can't go through until I open this up. As soon as I open it up, the water now is traveling on this loop here. It is no longer traveling through the system at all. So just be aware that that's, that was what that bypass is for. I can now unscrew this and the water inside the tank would drain out. And so I would unscrew both of these and basically put a bucket down below and then drain it out. That's good for the winter. It is also good because it has been known that many of these tankless hot water systems need to have their pipes cleaned because of hard water deposits. Uh, much like an espresso maker that gets the hard water corrosion inside, you need to rinse it out with vinegar. And so what I can easily do is take these flexible faucet connectors, hook it up to a pump that I can design later, hook it up to some vinegar, and then basically pump it through the system and clean it out as well. So it's got a dual purpose, draining and cleaning. Okay, now to put that back on. That's the plumbing situation that I have. Uh, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the display on the machine itself. Now, this is the XL. It is a German-designed uh, unit. I believe it is made in China, though. 
uh, the computer system here is in Celsius. There is no way to turn it to Fahrenheit that I can find. So when you look at your temperature gauge, you have to know your Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion rate or table. Uh, I just put a Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion table on the side. There's no really big issue with that. I, I'm not even having a headache with it at all. The only headache I've probably had with it is actually running the gas line in here. Um, I've been smelling propane off gassing from this. Uh, when the propane tank here, this is a temporary setup. What I'm going to do is poke another hole through the wall, build a platform, and then put uh, my propane tank outside the house. But I notice that when the propane tank gets low, it will off gas. I also noticed that when I hooked this up originally with their original parts, it was off gassing quite a bit through the parts. And so I had to get a different piece here uh, just to eliminate a lot of the hassle. So I think I got that problem pretty much solved at this point. Um, and once I get the propane tank out of here, I think it'll even make it even better. So that is uh, probably the, the rundown of this entire system. I've read a lot of reviews on this on Amazon. I've heard a lot of negative stuff about this unit. A lot of people are complaining about it freezing. I get that. Um, it, it's making me a little bit nervous because I'm wondering if the draft from the vent is coming in here and freezing this unit while the rest of the house is at 50 or 60 degrees at night that would be a little bit uh, upsetting so we're gonna see what it does I'm gonna drain in this in the winter time and I'm gonna use my thermometer and check out the system just to kind of be aware of what's going on uh, and we'll give more progress on that but I'm not there yet um, but I'll I'll keep you guys informed on that uh, other negative reviews, a lot of people complain about the temperature difference, and if you're going to go straight from your well from a very cold water source and use one of these, you probably want to reevaluate and maybe put it uh, into a tank that you can store in the house, get it up to room temperature, and then boost it uh, to the hot temperature you want from this. So that's another thing you might want to kind of plan for, is having somewhere you can have some uh, water stored at room temperature and then boost off of that. That will make your, your life a lot easier. Um, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.